Hello everyone, my name is Jim Burgess, and I am the Woodworking Illustrator. Alright, so for my first woodworking video, I decided to do a standard type of woodworking mallet. But I want to do it a little bit differently than the other ones that I've seen, because it seems like everyone who I follow on YouTube has done some sort of woodworking uh, mallet before. And also I want to do it because it seems like the, uh, uh, the beginning entrance into uh, woodworking is to make your own mallet. But I decided to do a twist on it and do it off of this giant mallet slash hammer that I made a few months ago. It's based off of a comic book story that I'm doing called Legacy that should be out in the near future in which the main character carries this around as he dispenses justice. And I was pretty proud of the way this came out, and later on when I decided to start this channel, I thought, I could actually make a smaller mallet of this. It would be a great project to start off with, and that's how I came up with this one. Uh, it has a good weight. It's made the standard way that a typical woodworking mallet is made, but I put all these little details on it using multiple tools, and I'll take you step by step on how I make this. And one other thing, with this giant one, it also lights up. Now, if there's enough interest expressed in this mallet, maybe in the near future I will do a tutorial remaking this again, because there's a lot of little things I know now that I would do differently. But let's not talk about this one. Let's get back to this. So for this first video, the first thing you're going to want to do is have your handy printed out templates for this project. Uh, I already have all of them complete done for you. Uh, just follow the link below this video and there should be a download for this template. The first thing I'm going to do is cut this piece of solid maple down to 7 inch lengths. So let's get started. Alright, so now we have our three pieces of wood cut to seven inches length. And now what we're going to want to do is cut out these templates and with a spray fixative glue them onto each piece. Now it doesn't exactly have to be exact because later on as we cut we'll even everything out. So you just want to make sure you get it right there as center as possible. And then we'll begin cutting. want to cut this part out just yet. You're going to want to cut out with a Forstner bit these circles here which I'll get to in a second so that you have more to grip as you're cutting through. So after you cut the holes out then we'll cut this piece off with a bandsaw. Alright, now with both circles completely cut out, I'm going to cut this little lines here that say cut out as straight as possible. And then after that, I'll save this piece for reference later, but um, we'll glue these two sections together to the other pieces. So now comes the gluing process. What we're going to do is glue these two pieces onto this back plate. So the one that has this, these symbols is the back plate. So we're going to flip it over and we're going to glue it just like so. 
even it out as possible to the edges. There should be a one inch gap here between the two pieces. So now let's get our glue board. All right, so what you're going to want to do to make sure these pieces come out as straight as possible and nice and even is when you clamp this up to set, you're going to clamp it up to the top piece, but you're not going to glue it yet. You're just going to have it clamped in here in place to hold it, and it should hold the shape in there just nicely. So let's get our clamps. And also as you're sizing up, you could put this piece you cut out back inside here to make sure not to glue it in, just so you can keep that nice spacing just right. So at the end here, after it's all clamped up, you have it set like it's some spaceship in a dock. Alright, so now that these inner pieces have set, I've taken them apart from the structure, and I'm just going to fill these up with BBs. But first, I'm going to take a heat gun and take this little piece of paper out so that uh, the wood will adhere to the wood. Here we go. Pretty simple. I make sure to put the symbols facing the proper way, so it should be how it faces when we put it back on here. Now we're going to even out the uh, sides of the hammerhead with the bandsaw. Now comes a time where we get to bring out a rotary tool. In my case, it's a Dremel with a really, really small carving slash engraving bit. You see right there. And what I'm going to do first is carve out the little bit of symbols here in the front face and on the rear. And then I'm going to cut out the inner part of these lines here with a slightly larger bit. So next up we're going to take these paper out with a heat gun and we'll start sanding from there. So I redefined the uh, inner little markings here with my uh, really small engraving uh, slash carving bit. Now with a larger bit on my uh, tool here I'm going to give it even more of a stone look along the edges as I have started here. Now I'm going to go through the whole piece on the edges and give it that stone look. Except staying away from here because this is the surface that will be used as an actual woodworking mallet if you wanted to. So you want to keep this as flat as possible. At the end, I will use a belt sander and place it on top just to get it uniformly smooth along this edge on both sides. And then after that will come the staining.
see, this is why I said you didn't really have to worry about whether or not all three of the pieces came up to the exact same line, lined up shape because I already knew you're going to take the rotary tool and really just go to town with it all along these edges here. Basically, you kind of let the tool do its own thing and you just let it dig in there into these grooves and you start to notice that it starts looking stone-like. And um, once it has the paint on top, it looks even more stone. What you can do after this portion is if there's any like low, larger pieces, you can uh, use the, the carving tool to take them out. Or just get some uh, fine grit paper and just hand saw it. I mean, not saw, but hand sand it down a little bit to make it a little bit smooth. Now it's time to start the staining process. I'm going to be using a uh, regular gray stain here, and I'm going to be using a uh, cloth to rub it in because that's just my preference, but you can use a brush. There goes the first coat. Chances are, just to be safe, I will add about maybe three or four coats. And like I said, you mainly want to focus on these ends here which may require a few coats or maybe even a light sanding to get the grit up so that it will absorb the stain better. Alrighty, so it's all nice and uh, pre-stained. Like I said, uh, you're not really focusing on the face or the top or the bottom. You mainly want to stain the face here that uh, you're going to be using to put blows on if you use it for woodworking. So you can take that impact and it shouldn't scrape off because the stain's absorbed into the wood unlike paint that sits on the surface. So um, next up is going to be the painting. Um, what I'm going to use for that is this Rust-Oleum hammered uh, paint. It has a nice texture on it that also helps it give a more of a stone look. First, I'm going to uh, mask off the parts here that are just going to remain stained with some masking tape. Alright, let's get that first coat of paint on. Probably will take two coats, maybe three, depending on how much you want to texturize it. You just want to make sure not to overpaint it, that you uh, cover up the lettering that you did. That is if you decide to do it. If you left it blank, it wouldn't matter as much, but it's never really good to overpaint something. So, start with one, uh, one coat here on uh, the front face and the sides. Here is the hammerhead, fully painted, and uh, about about three coats each, uh, each side here. You see the texture that the hammered uh, spray paint gave to it, which I really like. I also use it on the bigger version of this. And now we're going to take off the masking tape and see how that came out. There we go. See, <clears throat> this part will be without paint and should be able to use for impact and without um, paint scraping off of it. And for these edges here, we could probably just use some uh, high grade sandpaper to blend it a little bit. There we go. All right, next up, what I'm going to do is with a uh, scrap piece of wood with some uh, sandpaper fix it, fixed to it, I'm going to sand out a little bit of the inside here, just in case there's any uh, paint that might have gone inside. Uh, just keep it nice and smooth, also so that the wood glue would adhere better. Next up, I'm going to add this small acrylic uh, jewel to uh, the centerpiece of the hammerhead. This represents the uh, soul type jewel that's on the large hammer that lights up. So uh, this I just got a regular um, arts and crafts shop, or you can find them on eBay if you like. And what I'm going to do is uh, scrape just a small layer under the paint 
to the original wood so that I could use epoxy to fix it on there so it won't budge. All right, now I'm going to mix up some epoxy really quick here, just a tiny bit. quick I wanted to show everyone that I redid the tenon on the uh, original handle here I cut off the old one because I didn't like how uh, it came out it came out crooked and so that gave it a lot of play within the hammerhead so I redid it again this time figuring out how to keep each edge straight because when you're cutting a, cutting it round from around down like this it can be tricky because after you make uh, one series of cuts and you go to turn it you'll see that it might come off a little bit askew, which is what happened in the original case. So what I figured out was, well, as before I clamped it into place, I had by hand like this, and I found a piece of scrap wood that just happened to fit the gap of the original cut I made. So I wedged it right there, made sure it was nice and flush from top to bottom, all the way flush to the table at the bottom here, and I clamped it down from the top, and then just removed this and made my cuts going in this direction now and that's how I got it nice and straight and it's completely square all the way around then I made the center line here I cut it through so that I could put a wedge at the top once it's gluing into the hammerhead but if you wanted to you can actually make it uh, the handle out of a square piece of wood this is a scrim scrap wood here and it comes out a lot more easier to cut out the rectangular shape because all you have to do is just It'd be every time you uh, clamp it to your jig, it'll be nice and flush in both directions. So it's far easier to get that nice even cut with uh, within the first attempt. Whereas in this case, for me, it was two. So just want to show you that real quick. You gotta learn and move on. For the handle, I'm just going to use a torn piece of uh, 120 grit sandpaper. And I'm just going to sand it up by hand, make it nice and smooth. All right, for the finish, I'm going to be using some uh, Danish oil that you can just rub on with a cloth. Should look really nice on this uh, oak handle. Have this you can see the difference right here of tone it's just gorgeous now comes the time to make the uh, top and bottom pieces or assemble them rather I already pre-cut a uh, piece of scrap wood is glued together two pieces of board I had there's a, a definite measurement just to get a nice shape out here and that part is going to go with this piece here which is going to be the bottom piece. I got both of these at a hardware store. Pretty cheap, dollar something each. This is going to be the top, and this is for the bottom. What I'm going to do is use the drill press to drill a hole here and wood glue it in. And for this piece, for whatever reason, it comes with a hole pre made. And so what I'm going to do here is clean this hole up and then put a dowel in just to seal it and even it out. And also I'm going to stick this further enough inward so that it will go in through the hammerhead to secure it more properly. Since um, I'm using wood glue on the surface and since it's already going to be pre-painted, it's going to be harder for it to hear, adhere. So this will work better.
All right, so as, as I was doing this, I decided to uh, drill a uh, hole at the base of um, the block here so that I can insert another dowel through here, and this will go at the, uh, I'll cut off at a point, about an inch, and I will glue this in to another hole that I will drill at the bottom of the handle so that it will fix even stronger, have a better grip uh, center. All right, the glue has set. Now we're going to pre-stain both of these. All right, now they have set for a few minutes. Now it's time to put some oil. All right, so for the handle, like I said, I decided to uh, put a dowel on this piece just so I can get it more to center and uh, it'll hold more in place as I glue it in. Now, since I don't have a floor drill press, I'll have to use a hand drill, which makes it a little bit uh, more likely that you might come out crooked, which can make the whole piece come out crooked. So you want to try and get it as center and straight as possible. All right, so what I did end up doing was trying again, um, pinning it, or I mean clamping it to my workbench and drilling the hole straight through this way, and it turned out to work better that way. So now I can just glue this in place. And All right, so now it's time to add some spray lacquer to the handle. I uh, masked off the top here because I don't want any problems with the wood glue adhering to the inside of the hammerhead. And then when it's all nice and dry and everything's um, set, I will take some really ultra-fine grit sandpaper and just give it a nice sanding, make it nice and smooth. Now that the jewel is set into the hammerhead and ain't going nowhere, it's time to uh, mock up the leather strap here that's going to go connect it to the handle. Uh, I just got some leather hide here. Uh, this is a real genuine leather strip. I got it from a site on eBay. I started the mock-up here, uh, and I'm going to have this wrapped tight, I'm going to use a uh, cement adhesive. I already have one piece here cut at an angle. This is the type of contact cement I'll be using. I'm just going to use a brush to put it on, and I think I'm going to put just a little bit at the top, let that set with a clamp, and then I'll work my way with the rest. <music> to assemble the handle into the hammerhead. All right? what I did off camera was I tried to get some of the glue off, but it really had already stained the uh, leather, which is fine. I really didn't think that was a big deal. I wanted to have a worn look anyway. So I made it look even more worn by just getting the, the thousand grit um, sandpaper that I used to uh, send the lacquer. I did a little bit over it. Makes it look even tougher. You could grip it way better now. So. I'm going to uh, glue it to the uh, hammerhead. So 
next up. I'm going to clean this up a little bit, let it sit, and then I will cut this with the bandsaw. Now it is time to attach the top ornament. Alright, now I drilled a hole right in center there at the top and see how this fits in there. Some light tapping, this should fit in. Hey, I thoroughly enjoyed making this. I'm not sure if I like enjoyed making. I think I enjoyed making the smaller version more than the bigger version. The bigger version gave me a lot of trouble. All right, there you have it. I hope you enjoyed making this mallet with me today. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe down below. And also, do not forget to check out the corresponding illustration video that goes with this hammer slash mallet. I'm also probably going to do another corresponding illustration video that will have to do with the main character who uses this melon, so keep an eye out for that. And also, please consider being a uh, Patreon, because, let's be honest, I would like to do this full time, and it's only through your support that uh, I'll be able to do that. And keep on bringing you brand new content, and hopefully keep on bringing up my skill level and sharing it with you. So, once again, thank you very much. I'm Jeff Vargas, and we're working on this